Which is better, the HyperX Quadcast or the Quadcast 2? In short, the Quadcast 2 retains all the best features and sound signature of the original Quadcast, but it also adds a few new features and several quality of life improvements. So let's go over what's the same and what's different between these two mics. As for what's the same, first off, sound. And if you don't believe me, I'll be switching between the audio of both of these microphones throughout this video so that you can hear for yourself. So both of these mics are using three 14 millimeter condenser capsules. And because of that, they can record in four different polar patterns, cardioid, stereo, bidirectional, and omnidirectional. Nine times out of 10, it's best to just use cardioid, and that's what I have them both set to right now. Both microphones have a pop filter built in to reduce plosives, and they work all right, just don't speak too close to the microphone. Quick demonstration. In the original quadcast, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, quadcast two, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. Now in my testing, I couldn't honestly hear a difference between these two devices when it comes to the audio quality. There is one technical difference in the sound, but we'll get to that in the differences section. Now the pop filter that's under the grill, that leads me to the second similarity between these mics. And this is the lighting. Now the Quadcast 2 can do a little bit more in terms of lighting, but we'll talk about that in the differences section, but generally they're the same. So if you tap the top of the microphone, there's a capacitive mute button, another similarity, and the pop filter is actually red, so it just lights up and then makes the microphone glow red. And then same with the Quadcast 2. Muting the mic turns the light off, so it's really easy to tell if you're muted or not. The builds are also very similar with a combination of plastic and metal. The Quadcast 2 is stated to be aluminum. Now they come with a stand and a shock mount attached. The shock mount is all right. It mitigates very minor bumps. Quick demo on the Quadcast 1, just bumping this a little bit. Then the Quadcast 2. Now, when it comes to desk rumbles, the shock mount is okay, but there's something that I'll show in the differences section that's really gonna make a big difference. I'll just do a tiny bit of keyboard typing here. Now both microphones have both 5 8 and 3 8 inch threading and it's a bit of a long story why I actually have these on a desk and not on a microphone arm but I will say it kind of depends on what your stand is if you want to actually use an adapter or not because this is 3 8 inch threading and that's located a lot deeper in the little mount the threading that they have on the shock mount itself so if the threading on your mic arm isn't actually that long it might be useful to get one of these a 3 8 to 5 8 inch adapter i ended up actually using this because you can't really screw the shock mount on fully without some sort of adapter just because it only partially screws on there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the back of both of these for low latency mic monitoring. Now, as you probably noticed, I'm not doing that right now. I personally don't like or prefer doing that at all. Now, let's get into the differences, which is a lot more interesting. Now, as good as the original Quadcast is, it did have two minor issues which have been mostly addressed in the Quadcast 2. First off, the way the microphone unscrews from the base and then mounts onto a boom arm on the Quadcast is quite archaic and it's extremely easy to lose one of those pieces and if you do well you can't use it anymore i mean you can but you just can't put it on a stand the quadcast 2 allows you to actually pop the mic out of the shock mount itself well i suppose that could be useful if you already have your own universal shock mount because there's no threading on the mic itself for some reason but more practically you can mount the entire shock mount onto another stand and there are no loose pieces left in the process aside from the aluminum stand itself now, as for the second issue with the original Quadcast, honestly, it is largely still an issue with the Quadcast 2. I'd say probably it's the biggest thing that holds this microphone back. Some people won't care about it, but it is the subpar background noise rejection. These are still both condenser microphones. So there's gonna be a lot of background sounds that are leaking in that wouldn't leak in in something that's like a dynamic microphone with better background noise rejection. PC fans actually have to turn them down to 50% specifically for this recording and then also a lot of noise from out the window. These are both okay at cutting that out natively, but the Quadcast 2 is compatible with HyperX's Ingenuity software. In that software, you can apply a high pass filter which can reduce rumbles and bumps. So let me demonstrate that right now. So as you can see, only the Quadcast 2 is actually compatible with this software, but I'll be doing a little bit of bumping on the desk and then I'm gonna put this high pass filter on. It 
it's not completely gone, but it is quieted down quite a bit. And it's going to be really helpful if you're doing like some sort of keyboard typing. Quick demonstration of that. I'm going to actually keep the high pass filter on for the rest of this video. Now general ambient sounds still do get through, but since this is compatible with that software, maybe they'll add a noise reduction filter after the recording of this video and maybe even some EQ so you can tweak the sound to sound exactly how you want. Also the quadcast 2 has several lighting effects that you can change on the top up here, but there's not really that many right now. So hopefully they add some more cool ones, but right now I've got a combination of lightning and wave lightning has a little pop and then wave is just kind of i don't know it's not really that cool <laughs> some more quality of life changes both of these microphones can record the full range of human hearing 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz that's excellent however the quadcast 2 can record at up to 24 bit 96 kilohertz whereas the original quadcast is 16 bit 48 kilohertz. Can you actually discern the difference between the two in practice? Well, due to video rendering compression, definitely not in this video. Another thing, the braided wire has gone from USB mini B on one end and USB A on the other to USB C on both ends. And there's a USB C to A adapter included in the box. There's now a multi-function knob to adjust either the mic volume, headphone volume, or mic monitoring volume. You press it in while there are headphones plugged in to toggle between these. If there's no headphones plugged in, then you can just change the mic volume and that's it. On the original quadcast, there's a slippery volume wheel on the bottom and there's no way to actually change the mic monitoring volume. Also a change from a knob on the back of the quadcast for cycling the polar pattern to a new input by holding down the multi-function button for five seconds to do that instead. Plus the top of the mic will light up in a pattern that lets you know which one you're on. Now one last thing, now there might be some other changes but they didn't really stand out to me, is that the angle of the stand is slightly off center from the mic, which is actually a great thing because it gives some breathing room for the wires going in. All right, so now for my verdict. If you already have the original quadcast, I don't think it's a big enough transformation to warrant upgrading. Now if you don't have either, it's a no brainer to get the quadcast too over the original quadcast because there are so many small improvements that add up. So overall, I love both of these microphones, but I would give the edge to the Quadcast 2.